Wine? What the fuck is the matter with you? Shop to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. The sun is over the yard arm, which means it's definitely time for a beer. Well, is it? Because I have got a bottle of Wild Beer Murmur. <laughs> the Wild Beer Company are brilliant. They're, they're based in Berkshire and they do some fantastic beers. I've tried quite a few of theirs. And I'm trying to think of the bad one that I've had from, and I can't. They're really good. And I picked this up thinking, wild beer, brilliant. And now I've got it, I've just been looking over the bottle and uh, a lot, massive alarm bells are ringing with me because I don't know whether you know, but I'll declare it now. I fucking hate wine. I cannot stand it. It's not only the, the taste of the wine, it's the, it's the culture around it. It's the people who drink it. I have doubts about geezers that drink wine, and that's just from experience. I've found them to be fucking neurotic, irrational, and on the whole, fucking dickheads. Apologies if you drink wine, but you shouldn't be drinking it. Wine, you know Al Murray, right? I know people knock him and say, oh, he's a fucking arsehole and all that. That's all an act. But when he says, beer for the men, dry white wine or fruit-based drink for the lady, you know... Call me old school, call me a fucking bigot, call me what you like, I don't care. But I do believe in that. And I remember once, and it, it fucking sums them cunts up, right? I'm no Arsenal fan. If you support Arsenal, tough shit. I was in, I was in an Arsenal pub once, and there was these two fucking bellings drinking red wine, talking absolute bollocks about... And then they started on West Ham saying they were our shit we were and how many they were going to beat us by and we fucking annihilated them that was one of the last games at Ibrook that's what happens when you drink wine honestly I'm no big fan of it anyway getting back to the point I'm going way way off topic here right uh, this is this has got a lot of this is a beer but it's got a lot of wine characteristics in it um, let's just get onto it now but this is no um, this is no indication on the wild beer company they're really good so check them out I'll let you know what I think of this. At the moment, alarm bells are ringing. I'm hoping they can prove me wrong. Okay, so what is this? This is a 330ml bottle. You wouldn't think it by the size, but it is 330ml. It's 5% in the volume. This is where it starts getting fucking wrong, right? Uh, at Wild Beer, beer flavour and balance... Oh, sorry, I always do this. I can read. At Wild Beer, there should be a comma there. Flavour and balance come first. Beer style is always a poor second. Okay. Uh, murmur is the epitome of what we do. Taking inspiration from food and drink around us, this beer is fermented with an ale and two different wine yeasts. Okay, the two different wine yeasts are... I've got them written down here. I had to look them up. I, oh, Chardonnay... And it's got Belgian ale and something else. Oh, is it? I don't know. It's got something else in it. Uh, two different wine yeast. And utilizes, utilizes hops with Venus notes. Yeah, they use that Nelson Savon. Is it Nelson Savon? That's the, one of the, the hops which have got like a grape like flavour to them. With Venus notes. Venus. Venus. I, don't, see, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Venus. Is it Venus? Venus? I don't know. Notes to produce a complex balanced beer. In the way a chef brings together the taste on the plate, this beer has elements of sweet, dry, bitter and acidity. All joking aside, I looked at this and I thought, is this going to be like a lambic? It says, Murmur is fantastic food pairing beer with its dry and slightly acidic character, making it a great partner for all sorts of flavours, particularly fish and white meats, wine yeasts. Yeah, so explaining why they use wine yeast. And to be honest, 
all joking aside, I think that's a good idea. You, I think they should be experimenting with that because if it produces great beer, who am I to fucking judge? Wine yeast, yep, for a good reason. We took inspiration from winemakers who make use of manoproteins. Yeah, manoproteins are big in winemaking. It's basically what gives it its sort of unique flavour. Um, manoproteins released during uh, auto... There's, there's all these chemistry bods going, you're a fucking idiot, and you're probably right, during autolysis, autolysis of the yeast cells when it comes into contact with the lees, to lees to produce a richer, fuller mouthfeel. We have specifically used a white burgundy chardonnay yeast rather than, say, champagne because of the time it takes for them to autolyse the products and these manoproteins. Right, OK. This is also, um, yeah, so they, I don't know if they dry hop it or not, but... They add the yeasts at different different times. So this is a completely new new one on me. I don't know what to expect. I'm going to approach it with an open mind, and hopefully it's going to make me eat my words, or drink my words even. Let's get it open and see what's going on. Right. Smoky bottle opening. Uh, there's Cap. I do like the Wild Beer logo. Very good indeed. What have we got on the nose? Dare I sniff? Oh. Oh, fucking hell. It's very, very yeasty. And to be honest, they use Belgian ale yeast in this, and that's what I'm getting. I'm getting Belgian yeasty esters, such as... Um, spice and I'm trying to work out what that other one is. It's almost like a yeah, like a I wouldn't say vinegary, but like a, a tart sort of aroma to it. But okay, let's uh, let's get it in the glass. Maybe I can oops, maybe I can get a bit more. I don't even know what colour this looks like. I'm I'm assuming it's cloudy because it looks cloudy in this in this brown bottle. And I'm glad they put it in brown bottles. It will save me um, ranting and raving. Right, there it is. Nice and hazy. It looks really good. Nice and hazy, fair bit of carbonation. Dirty glass again. See that? I just cannot get that glass clean. Fucking dishwasher. Uh, on the nose, what are we getting? It's smelling a bit more like a beer now. But the aromas are very faint, I have to say. There's very vague fruit on that. Quite a fresh smell to it as well. Almost pine-like, but I know it's not pine. But it, that's what it's reminding me of. There's a very slight tart sort of aroma you know like you, you can smell that on the aroma and there's a touch of clove and spice as well which I'm assuming is coming from the Belgian yeast almost like a vit beer or a Belgian blonde this is going to be interesting cheers Wow. That is so complex. Let me dive in again. All right, immediately, while well, I've got it in my head, there's a lot of spice. The Belgian yeast is quite strong in this, quite dominating in this. There's clove, black pepper, there's coriander, a touch of fruit zest as well. I'm not sure which, possibly orange, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's orange. Certainly getting that on the aftertaste.
Very dry mouthfeel. But quite full bodied as well. This is very, very Belgian from what I'm getting. But now there's some fruity, some zesty citrus fruit coming through on the end. Wow, that is really complex. Oh, the one thing I will say, this is not a boring beer. Yeah, there's also mango. I'm getting mango from it too, and I don't know where that is coming from. Unless I've used other hops in there as well. But it's not bad, I have to say. Um, I was expecting something like a Hooser, or a Gers, whichever language you are speaking in Belgium. But uh, I'm not getting that. I was expecting a really dry, harsh, sort of tart taste and aftertaste as well. Not getting that either. But the overwhelming sort of feel to this beer and uh, flavours that are coming out to this are Belgian. And the Belgian ale yeast is quite dominant on this. Plenty of clove, plenty of spice, plenty of coriander, plenty of um, zest like orange zest, but there's also that sort of mango that, or stone fruit that's coming through. I can't quite work out which. And then you're left with a very, very dry, well, I wouldn't say very, very dry, but a little dry mouthfeel, which is so common in Belgian Vit beers and blonde ales. And even the, even the aromas now, it's just overwhelmingly Belgian. Definitely complex but very drinkable. Nice body to it as who. So what's the verdict? Well, I must admit, I was dreading the, like opening this. I bought this, didn't read anything about it. I just thought, it's the wild beer, you can't go wrong. And then I started reading up on the back about the wine yeasts and how they're you know influenced by wine. And I fucking hate wine. I still haven't changed my opinion of it. You're not really getting much wine influence, in my opinion. This is heavily influenced by Belgian ales with a touch of the New England style with the fruit. And I know they use three different yeasts, but the Belgian ale yeast is dominant in this, and you get all them lovely Belgian flavours you do, like in a blonde ale or a Vit beer. So if you like them two styles, you're probably going to like these or this. But... Uh, I quite like it. It's okay. Um, would I buy it again? Um, probably not, because I there's just so many better Belgian beers out there. But it's okay. I appreciate what they're doing. They're trying to experiment, and yeah, that's how things get done. And you know, you could if you don't experiment, then you just end up with the same old shit, then yeah, of course. Uh, but I quite like this. I'll give this a seven out of ten. Um, it's it's a good effort. I'll give it that. It's it's a really nice sort of balance of Belgian Belgian yeasty esters with a very nice mouthfeel, and to be honest, not much wine influence. If I was going to say anything, there's just a hint of New England IPA with the mango, but yeah, not bad overall. Seven out of ten. Yeah, 7 out of 10, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.